wonderful, warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for coming today. Um, did she not want, you don't want to move, Belinda? It's okay. It's okay. No? Okay, you maybe do, maybe don't. Okay. So today I welcome you, but I also want to have a special welcome to our newcomers. We have some newcomers with our church, sorry, <laughs> and um, I'm going to ask that you stand up and let us really welcome you in the way that we want. So newcomers, if you're here, you should have a gold thingy wa on you. What, if I got anybody that's going to stand up? There, yay! Yay! We welcome you to our church and we uh, pray that you'll get active in women's ministry. <laughs> okay. Before I get going here, I, I, I welcome all the visitors. And if you are a visitor, that means you don't know where our restrooms are. And we know that's really important. So through the doors to the right, we have the ladies' rooms. But we have confiscated the men's rooms today. So we will have a break right before the raffle, I think. So at that point, you are welcome to use the men's room too. Right, Larry? Larry, come on. Okay. Jeremiah, were you shocked by that music? I want to tell you all the, were you? So I want to tell you all the thinking that went into that quickly. First of all, does anybody know who sang that? I didn't either. <laughs> Three Dog Night. And it was written in 1971. Okay, 1971. And when the song was really written, it was Jeremiah was a prophet. But we all know how that goes, so it kind of changed to Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> a bullfrog and Jeremiah the prophet had a lot in common. They were both loud, they had a message, and no one listened to them. So think about that next time you hear a bullfrog, right? <laughs> so when we decided what we were going to put up on the wall, believe me, there's a lot of thinking that goes into this. We thought, as it reads, um, I helped him drink his wine. So we thought, hmm, I don't know. But as you read the Bible, wine was one of the drinks of choice, right? So then we thought that was okay. Then as we went to the lyrics, it says, Joy to the world. You all know this. Say it with me. All the boys and girls. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. So what a wonderful message is that. So now you understand it was not only to get you in here quickly, but it really did make sense to us. Okay? Thank you, thank you. I would like to ask, Trisha Shorty to open us in prayer, please. I never knew that about that song. I tried out for Drill Team in 1973. <laughs> that really? song. No idea. Yeah. I read it somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, so let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together today and for your loving kindness and grace for being compassionate and abiding in love for us, Lord. Please bless all the households that are present today. My desire is to be women of gratitude for the many ways you have blessed everything we do here today. I pray for, I pray our eyes will remain on you as we listen to Darlene. I thank you for Darlene and her wonderful talent you have given her. And I know we will be blessed by her because Please be with us today, Lord, in your name. Amen. The Song of Solomon. <coughs> well, the Song of Solomon 2.12 reads, The flowers cover the earth. The time of singing has come. So I ask you to join me in welcoming Michelle Montoya, 
Hello. The words to the song, if you so would like, and she would like you to, are on the back of the program. So once you kind of get the lyrics going, not before then, but when you kind of get the tune, <laughs> indescribable, and please join in. Thank you, Michelle. Wonderful. Well, good, I should say good afternoon. Um, it's my privilege and my joy to be here with you. Um, like she said, the words are on the, on the, in your program. Whoops, I had something all up on my phone, and then, you know, it just closes when you don't want it to. Um, but I wanted to share a verse with you. It's from Romans 1.20. It says, For the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. And how can you look at the glory of God's creation and not believe in the creator? So this song is written by uh, a lady named Laura Story. She's actually a worship leader. I can't remember where, I think in Texas. Um, but this song is called Indescribable. So again, when you catch on to the tune, please sing along with me.
singing, ladies. Thank you, Michelle. Did I mention that Michelle has the pleasure of being married to our Steve Montoya, who we all think the world of? <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Let me make sure I'm not leaving something out. Okay, let's get on with our program. Each one of us is God's special work of art. Through us, he teaches and inspires, delights and encourages, informs and uplifts all those who view our lives. God, the master artist, is most concerned about expressing himself. His thoughts and his intentions through what he paints in our character. He wants to paint a beautiful portrait of his son in and through your life, a painting like no other in all of time. That was written by Joni Erickson Tata in 1949. She's an American writer and a speaker. At this time, I have the pleasure of introducing one of my treasured friends, Sue Ferguson, a member of our church, who will narrate. And we'll also introduce Darlene Kreit, who is our artist, and will amaze you with the talents that God has given her. Thank you. Wow, isn't it a perfect day to fall back, to get us all together? I woke up this morning and said, it couldn't be better. We've suffered this hot weather, and now it's like just perfect. So what a pleasure it is to introduce Darlene. Uh, we really um, got to know Darlene and Ron. They moved here right in the, the beginning of the COVID shutdown. And they moved here from Chico to be closer to her mother, who's in Marysville, and their friends, the Scots, who moved here, long life friends. And they, uh, they introduced us, some of us, to Darlene. So we started saying, whoa, look at who we have in our midst. So um, I wanted to say that, um, let me see my next part, okay. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you go, okay, I'm not talented. Darlene's talented. God gave her all that stuff, and it didn't give it to me, right? And I'm saying, yes, it's true. <laughs> she is incredible. She has uh, God's gift of art, but she also has energy, and she has desire and need, and, and you go through her whole life's picture, and you can start seeing what has made this beautiful woman today. And I would say this, that um, she, she opened up many businesses. She raised two wonderful daughters. She's a retired, a sort of retired, never retired woman. But she retired after 40 years, decided she wanted to learn fine art. So she sat and took lessons from uh, Frank Wilson in Chico, who does very fine, really, uh, you know, not impressionistic, but very realistic art. And for five years, she took from him, and he finally said, I think you should start painting for money or go teach. And anyway, at this time, she had a friend in Williams who was looking for uh, ways to make money. She was teaching art to uh, some young kids after school, and she needed funds. So the two of them got together and started these art classes that you're seeing on here. Uh, this, and of course, this was kind of when sip and paint was popular, uh, but still, there's no sipping, just painting and learning. <laughs> and uh, I must tell you, Darlene is very directive. And uh, what, uh, when she talks about these classes quietly to me, tears come to her eyes. She's so pleased with how people that come and say, I can't do that, and they can. And she's so directive. So I'm hoping that she will teach us how to do this. Everyone, a lot of people know that I do watercolors. So she came to my house and looked around at the watercolors. And she, I said, she said, I want you to teach me watercolors. So I thought, oh dear. So anyway, I get all this stuff out and I'm trying to show her the wash and how to do the cloud. And I look over, she's done. <laughs> I thought, okay, I get it. So, and then 
but she takes instruction like that, and she uh, already kind of knows. And then when she would send me pictures of watercolor she had done, I would say, well, it needs this and that, and boom, next day, another picture, done. So she takes instruction as well as gives it. So I'm hoping that we can do this. But uh, I want to say, after she took those classes and her friend uh, in Williams, they started these classes together, and uh, they were teaching these kids, and the teachers started wondering where these kids are learning to paint so well. So uh, the teachers started coming to her classes. So now they're very, very popular. And then I wanted to say, uh, I don't know if the program, I didn't uh, read the back of the program, but when I thought of Darlene's life, how she started out, her, she was born in Oklahoma. Her parents came, migrated with all of the family through to California because of the Dust Bowl. Remember that, that whole era. And so all they had was their Christian faith. They had each other. They had their families, and they stuck together. They worked hard. They got to Southern California. Her father was in a terrible accident, which disabled him for quite a few years. So they were got... They ended up in Olivehurst in the, running a grocery store. Darlene was six years old. And, of course, you know, a six-year-old, you guys have grandkids. They love to draw. And here she was drawing and probably saying keeping her busy, but also her signs were everywhere in the grocery store, apples, five cents, or whatever. But people started being charmed by her art. So that began her career. And she was, would paint for, I'd say, I'll paint your dog for a dollar. And so, okay. And so she learned to market her paintings early. Uh, in junior high, a teacher taught her calligraphy, and she worked and worked and got perfect at it. And she started selling her, doing menus for hamburger stands, the, you know, the menu board. She would do menus for restaurants using her calligraphy. So, again, she's just, art was just, oh, and her, her mother is amazing, but her whole family are creative. It, I think it's from our era, too, where we did so many things. We crocheted, we knit, we, we, we did things like that. We were taught our kids that. And so um, I was going to see. I got myself out of track. Wait. And so, <laughs> oh, so her parents, okay, so then she had the, they had the grocery store, and one time, and I'm not sure, but it's a gas station. They got a gas station. The kids all learned how to fill, the, do, change the oil, to do the tires. They, could all, they all worked at it and did the gas station thing. So then in high school, she graduated from Marysville High School, and she did the, was the art editor and produced the yearbook of her high school. So you can see that her life was just uh, art in many forms, and it's still that way. She'll paint furniture. She paints everything. She paints everything. And so... Uh, I'm saying then that, um, oh, I wanted to say that her mother is 94, lives in the same house her father built for her, and she still makes pies. So, Darlene, let's get going, girl. Like, yeah. Can you hear? Oh, there I go. I like that person <laughs> that she just talked about. <laughs> okay, my name's Darlene. I want to welcome you here. Um, I'm going to take you on a 45-minute speed trip through a painting here. So if I were doing this painting at home, I probably would take all day. But I'm going to do it in 45 minutes. And I hope you enjoy it. The time should go really fast. You can watch on the boards up above because you probably won't be able to see any detail on here. So if you keep an eye up there, you'll be seeing the same thing that I'm doing. And as I go along, um, I, Sue will narrate a little bit because when I'm thinking about what I'm going to paint, I can't usually talk. So sometimes when I get kind of quiet, she's going to perk up here and so fill in. All right. So of first space. of all, I'm going to start with Am a blue I, canvas. I'm, I'm, I painted this ahead of time just to save time. This is cerulean blue and white. And now first thing I'm going to do is we're going to start with the sky. 
Now, you know, in life, God puts us in places. He always paints a picture for us before he plants us there. The same with a tree. He doesn't just put a tree out in the middle of nowhere. So we're going to start with a beautiful sky. And to add to that sky, first of all, I'm going to start with some clouds. So what I'm going to do first is I'm using a round brush. If you want to come up afterwards and see my tools, you can do that. But right now, I'm just going to speed through this. And um, I'm going to wet it. And then with the clouds up here, I'm just going to take some white on the tip of this. And then I'm going to put some clouds up here. OK? We're just going to put them on very quickly here. This is sort of godlike, don't you think? And then to, to smooth them out a little bit, we don't want I'm just lightly going to drag these, just so you can see that clouds kind of go wherever you want to put them. Already, and when I, I do you, these classes, and then we'll add another one here. I think you can do this. You see this? And you see, it's just a matter of putting some clouds in here. OK? And when I do a class, I, I slow down a little bit and show you how to do it, OK? So now, after we get the clouds in, what we're going to do is we're going to put our horizon line on. And if you notice when you look at mountains in the back, you'll notice that they're darker in the front. They get lighter, they get lighter, they get lighter. It's kind of like our memories that we make through our lifetime. As memories fade, they get lighter out there, but you don't never forget them. So I kind of think of um, clouds kind of like memory, or mountains kind of like memories. So again, I'm going to take the white. I'm going to use a little blue, a little bit of purple, and another blue. And I'm going to use white on both sides of my brush. And then I'm going to add a just a tad of blue here, just a tad of this blue, and just a tad of purple. So I'm not using very much. I want this fairly light, because this will be the background. And I'm going to put these mountains in by just randomly putting them in like this. OK? Now, when you paint mountains, too, I don't want to just go like this. I don't want to go just like this. I want to keep the direction the mountain goes. So mountains have you know, terrain. So we're going to come down this way, put these mountains in, get the mountain a little bit more cleaned up on the top here, and pull the mountain down the direction that it really goes. Lighten this one up just a little bit. OK, then we, as we come forward, we'll put a little bit darker mountain in the foreground of this one. And I'm not going to follow the same mountains, because I don't want it to look kind of like a cookie cutter here. I want to just put a little bit lighter mountain in here. And like I said, as they come forward, they get a little bit lighter. This is called atmospheric perspective. And what it is, is it makes the lighter ones in the back look further away. And now I'm going to come closer to the front with the final ones. And again, I'm going to mix this this way. And the last ones will be the darkest ones. And then again, keeping the direction that the mountains go here. And then. You can just make your mountains wherever. We could make these, we could call these the buttes, but they're not really designed to look too much like the buttes. So anyway, we've got our, can you see how the distance they look like when they go back now? They get further away back there. And that's, that's what we're creating, is the, the illusion of the distance here. OK. Now we're going to move on to putting these mountains in a foundation. And Sue will tell you about the foundation of these mountains, how it kind of relates to our lives. We're not just plunked out there. We actually have a foundation. That's what God provides for us, is that steady, earth-like, solid rock foundation. And when you put it in a picture, it better be a straight. Because I've made it crooked, and it really looks funny. 
but uh, God doesn't make mistakes, but we need to have that. That's our anchor, is that, that, that anchors the whole picture, is that foundation line. It truly is true, and it could be our, uh, extrapolated to be thinking about God being our anchor as well. And the base of our, all of our, our decisions, our life is so connected. Okay, now we've got our foundation on here, so our mountains are actually sitting on the earth. And now, back in the distance, I'm going to put some trees. And the trees in the background won't be real detailed, because when you do look off into the distance, you don't see a lot of detail in the trees. You just see kind of these uh, green masses. So I'm just going to use the brush, and I'm going to put a little bit of greenery back here. I don't want to have it all just level, because then it won't look very natural. So just kind of randomly back here, we're just going to fill this in. And so you can see it's very simple, just easy to do. It's amazing to me how, how it works for her. And then when we try it, it goes all silly, huh? But, I mean, I think I could do that. I bet you guys could too. Well, let's you... try it. We're going to have Darlene teach us how. Okay. Now that I have these back here. I have the darker mountains in the background, and so I'm going to bring my sun. You always want to figure out where the light is going to come from in your picture, and I'm going to bring my light across this way. So what I'm going to do is now I want to highlight the top of these trees, but not the base, just the highlight, and then I want to get the idea that the sun is coming across this way. So it, to save time, instead of using a brush, I like to use these sponges. These are lo lofa sponges like you use on your face. And I just cut them up in pieces. And I can paint a lot faster with these than doing every little brush detail. So I'm going to use those. And I have a very small one right here. And for the t highlights on this, I'm going to take a little bit of the green that I already used. And I'm going to uh, put a little bit of yellow with it right here like this a little bit of bright yellow. You notice I'm putting them all on at the same time. This is another technique that instead of painting layer by layer by layer, you can get a much more realistic look of a variegated bush or colors by putting all the colors on at the same time. I think so, that's amazing, darling. That's amazing. And then a little bit of orange and a little bit of white. So I have five colors on this already, OK? And now I'm just going to highlight the top of my bushes, and I want you to see how, this, how effectively this works. And see? So I'm going to get a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then I'm cre I can create this little detail across the top of these trees. That's just perfect. It, by it just adding like yeah. this little bit of sponge. I'm going to get a little bit lighter in the center because this is where the sun is. So let's get this just lightened up a little bit right in here. And now, do you get the feeling that my sun is going to come right through yes, here? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm glad you're getting that feeling. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> well, and that didn't take so long. That would take a long time in watercolor. You'd have to reverse it and leave that white. And so it's so amazing. It's like being God to be able to put this on top. Okay, now we're going to create our valley. I'm going to bring, put this uh, line back in. I'm going to bring the valley down. And because we're going to do a fall color, I'm going to use, again, I'm going to take this brush. I'm going to pick up some green. I'm going to, on one corner, I'm going to add dark yellow. I'm going to order light yellow. I'm going to add orange. I'm going to add some ochre. And I'm going to turn my brush now. All those colors are on here. And I'm going to turn them up so they all face up. And I'm going to set this right on here and watch what happens. I'm going to make this valley back here. And when I get done with it, it's going to look like it's got some flowers. It's got some movement. And I don't have to paint every layer of color at one time. That is amazing. Do you see how that's working? So now I'm going to load it again with the same colors and the green, and I'm going to put the next row on right here. And I'm going to bring this valley down a little bit, because this valley is turning fallish. And I'm trying to get this all on without 
painting each layer one at a time. Okay, now we've got our light coming through here. So I'm going to go back with the yellow and a little bit of white. And right through here, I want to keep this coming. So I'm going to go right in through here with a little bit of the yellow to lighten up again, lighten up my valley. Because I want to emphasize this center area for where my light is coming. Okay? Now, next we're going to move on to our creek bank, which we'll be putting in right here. But first, I'm going to fill in and get rid of this blue. So this is just kind of a basic, generic fill in here. I just want to hide most of this blue. So I'm just going to use this green and get rid of this blue down through here. Because I did paint this whole canvas blue to start with to save time. Now I'm just going to get rid of some of the blue by getting getting rid of it like this and on this side too so then all of a sudden you have the water coming through your picture how beautiful and see i didn't have to make my creek my creek is gonna your creek be on here already and it reflects the sky so it's so amazing and this doesn't have to be any certain direction you just paint this over and get it in because we'll be putting lots of things over the top of this I just want to get rid of the all of the blue here okay and then let's just bring this down a little bit more right here so that my valley's a little bit further down on this side just using the same autumn colors that way okay now I want to put in my creek line and when you do a creek you can have the grass go up to the water or you can have rocks you can have dirt or whatever I'm going to choose to put some dirt along here and uh, maybe just a couple rocks so I'm not I didn't rinse my brush you don't have to rinse your brush every time either because when you just keep going I just keep adding the colors on I hardly ever rinse my brush but um, so anyway now I have my brush I'm going to take this plate which I have uh, dark brown I have black I have a really dark brown and then I have these these colors again with some white and I have the ochre so what I'm going to do with this one I'm going to pick up the really dark brown to start with and I'm going to put it on both sides and when you when you load your brush you want to you want to push down into the paint like this because that gets the paint to go between the bristles and it also when you push down it keeps the tip of your brush very flat very you don't want it to get all full of paint and thick like this so by pushing down you get the paint in the brush but yet you still have a skinny tip and then on the corner I'm going to pick up a little bit of black just on this very little corner and then a little bit of the darker here on that corner and then on the ochre, I'm going to pick up a little bit of ochre right on top of that. So I have five colors on here again. Five colors. Now, wow. I'm going to, because I want my light on the top of my shoreline and on the top of, because the light's coming here. I don't want my, I don't want my light down on the, here. I want my light on the top. Yes. I'm going to paint with the lighter corner facing up so I can actually put the light on the top. So as I come across here, I'm just going to smudge my shoreline in like this. And you see, I'm going to leave the light of the shoreline on the top like this. And I'm just going to get this in here to start with. And I'll pick up a little bit more. Ochre, brown, black. And keep my, keep my ochre kind of to the top here, the lighter to the top. Keep my darker at the bottom, right where the water is. I think that's where the frogs hang out. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Jeremiah's there, right? And then right around here, I'm just going to go back a little bit and make this just a little bit darker so that it's nice and dark on the shoreline. All right. Isn't that a miracle? It's a visual miracle. There you go. 
Now, on here, I think I'll put a little rock right here. So on the idea of putting on a rock, I'm going to do the same thing. And I, this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe this brush off so there's not so much dark on it. But I'm going to add the um, brown on the top here. And I'll put it on both sides. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black on the corner and a little bit of ochre on the other corner. And this time, I'm going to just scoop a tad of white on, onto this, just a little bit of white right there. And I'm going to make a rock here. And again, you can use this multicolor effect to make a rock, rather than painting your rock black and then painting it brown and then painting part of it gray and then painting part of it white. You can make the whole rock using all the colors at one time. So I'm going to set this on here like this, and I'm going to come across, and I'm going to pull this like this. And then I'm going to get a little bit of white, and I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to lighten up the top of my rock, and I'm going to pull my rock this way. Can you tell that's a rock? Yes. All right. OK, so now I think I'll put a, maybe a couple little ones here. I have the white again on the top. And I'm just going to set a little rock right there and a little rock right there, and maybe one right there. So we just have a couple highlighted rocks back there. This way, our light's coming through here, just like this. And it's going to hit the top of this rock, and it's going to hit the top of that rock. OK? All right. So now we're going to move on to getting in our background back here, which goes behind our tree. Because we're going to put our trees in here, and I can't paint the tree, then go back and put the background behind it. So I've got to put the bushes behind the tree first. And so we'll do that now. And then after that, I'll put the tree on. So again, I'm going back to these brushes. And li I like to use the ones that are really stiff. You can wash them 100 times. They last forever. And then they get paint on them. But the, the stiffer they get, the better they are. And you get the ones that are really prickly, that's got a lot of uh, pokely part to it. So with the uh, background right here, we're going to put some bushes in here. And I think they're going to be kind of similar to the trees back here with some fall. So I'm going to take this sponge, and I'm going to set it in my green paint. And I'm just going to press it on here like this so that I get it kind of on the, the tips of the uh, brush here, or the sponge. Then I'm going to put a little bit of yellow, not, not as much green as I did, a little bit of orange on the other side. So I have a little yellow, a little orange, and then a little bit of this brighter yellow right here. And so I've got four colors on here. And now I, w I don't want to push hard and make a blob. I want to push very gently, and I want to get this nice bushy effect. I want you to see how the bush will come across here. Just like that. Fantastic. OK, then I'm going to get some more. And again, I'll pick up the yellow, the orange, the ochre right here. And I'm going to set some in front of this rock the same way. I'm going to go up here. I want to keep it really airy, so I don't, I don't want to push here. I want to see the, the water through it. So I don't yeah. want to get real pushing really hard. I want to push very gently. And you see how I've got the, the bushes now. And the highlight is on the bushes. The light, the sunlight is already on them, the way I mix the paint on the sponge. I'm going to keep coming forward on this one. Well, it's amazing how your eye pulls it all together because it knows what it's supposed to be. You just, you make, you read it right. It's and just amazing. how you add the, the um, paint, the more, the more you add of one color, you can change the color of this. So like if I add more uh, yellow or I add more orange, then I get a little bit more orangey bush over here. I'm going to put a little more bright back here to get this just to open, lighten up a little bit more behind here. Oh, it looks fallish now. And then 
I'm going to come on down here, and then we'll put the tree in. Then we will come back, and we will work on this again. I'm just going to fill this in a little bit so that this is all kind of taken care of here. There we go. All right. So now we have our mountains. We have our distant horizon line. We have our valley back here. We have our water line. We have our rocks. And now we'll put in our tree. And I love painting trees. Trees are like our lives. I love painting trees. I always have since I was a little girl. When we were little kids, we used to go out and climb up in the big oak trees out of my mom's property. And we'd sit up there for hours on those branches of those trees. But anyway, I, I love, paint, love painting trees. So a tree is kind of like we are. You know, we, God plunks you where he wants you, but he plans for you. He gives you a valley where he's going to put you, and then he gives you nourishment, like this one's going to have a stream. And, he, and then you grow roots, and, and you get planted, and you, you're the same bloom where you're planted. You really are. Um, and so trees are kind of like us. We, we grow up, we get strong, and then we start branching out with family and friends and directions. And they remind me a lot of our life. So to do our tree, I'm going to load the brush again. I haven't cleaned my brush either, by the way. I'm going to wipe it off a little. So our tree, I'm going to paint it the same way with a multi of color. Now, because my tree light is here, it sounds to logical that I want the right side of my tree lighter because the sun is going to hit it from the right side. And the left side of my tree will be darker because it's in the shadow. So what I'm going to do is the way I load my brush is I'm going to put on some black a little bit like this. I'm going to put on dark brown a little and a little bit of the darker brown. So I have brown, dark brown, medium brown. Now, I'm going to draw up like this. So with, again, my paint on the top. So because I want the right side lighter, I'm going to put my lightest colors on the right side. So now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick up some ochre on this side and a little bit of white on this side. So this right side is my lighter side of the brush. And I'm going to start about here. Now, there's a technique to painting a tree in one stroke, which is wonderful. And when you go up, there's a technique to twist your brush. You start out flat, just like you stick it flat on there. And then as you go along, you twist the brush and get up onto the tip of the brush, and it becomes thin like a pencil. So what I'm going to do is start right here. And I'm going to gently, I don't want to go real hard, because if you push down really hard, you lose all your paint in the first inch. So I'm going to go very lightly. I want to go up with my tree trunk. I'm going slowly up with my tree trunk. And as I get higher, I'm going to start twisting my brush. And you're going to see how thin it gets. And I've got the first branch in my tree. That and I've got so the lighter fantastic. side on this side, OK? So now I'm going to go up and put another branch on this tree. I think we have to practice this one. <laughs> it takes you two or three times, and you'll get it. Trust me, yeah. you'll get it. OK, so I'm going to load the brush again, black and dark. And this time, I still want the light on the right side because I still want, even though this, this is going to come up, I want the, light, the right side lighter. So I'm going to add ochre again. I'm going to add a little bit of this yellow this time and a little bit of white to my brush. I keep forgetting to hold this up here so you guys can see it. OK. So now, another thing to remember, too, when you paint a tree, I see a lot of people, they want to put this on, then they want to go back and put a branch on. They just go, Nick, like that. <laughs> you don't do that. Oh, I've got busted. You, <laughs> you always go back to the base of the tree. You start in the tree and go up with every single branch, and that way it makes your tree look natural. It's kind of like our lives. When we get out here and we get off in Never Never Land, 
go, go back to your base and start again. So I'm going back to my base. I'm going to lightly go up my, my base. And this time, I'm going to get up here, and I'm going the other direction. And I've added onto my tree trunk. OK, so now I'll add a few more, and then we'll so now, I, if I want to add in here, I'm still going to go in here. I still have the same colors on here. I'm still keeping my lightest color on the right side. And I'm going to go into my tree right here in it. I'm going to hook into it. And then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to go out of it this way. And I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to go this way and back in and go this way, and back in and go this way. So I can get this tree going wherever I want it to go. And then I'm going to come back here and lighten up this right here, getting put in the ground. So I'm just going to hook on here, come down a little bit, and put this tree trunk on. So I've got my tree. Go in here and put it lighter. Oh, OK, now I'll put my second one. I'll do the same thing, the brown, the dark, that. I'm going to put my white on and my ochre on. And I'll put my second littler tree back here. I'm going to set it right here so it's kind of coming out of the same spot. And I'm going up with it. And I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to bring this tree up this way and then into the tree and out, into the tree and out. You see, each time I go into the tree and I come out with the branch. I'm going to go and over see, here and add. And you don't even need to know how to draw. You just paint it. You don't. I don't, I don't draw mine first. It's not a tree because a tree is just the way it is. So you make it. It's sort of godlike. You're okay. creating a tree. So I have my tree trunks in, and I'm going to just put a little bit more ochre on here, just so I can lighten this trunk just a little bit on here. And then this tree trunk, I'm going to bring him over, bring this one over. And we will put, we'll be putting leaves on this. So, and again, I'm going to keep the top, top of my roots lighter by putting a little bit of, just a little bit of white on the top of them so that the sunlight is hitting this right side. So even these, I want the sun to come down here and hit these on the top edge. So this way you can tell my light. Now, I'm going to get a little bit more light on this tree, because I want the sun coming in here. So I'm going to use this ochre color, which is one of my lighter colors, a little bit of white. And then I'm just going to go up the edge of this just a little bit to keep the edge of this tree light. Because I want that side of the tree very light compared to the rest of the tree. And then this side, I want to make it just a little bit darker, because this is the shady side. So I'm going to take some black, and I'm going to come down this side here. Just a little bit of dark. Get this a little bit darker. There we go. It's kind of a mossy tree. You can do other colors, brown, black, different colors of trees. OK, so, so and now we have our roots in there into the ground. and. Sue can tell you what, how you get planted. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, we have that. <laughs> well, I do my next step. Right. Well, the roots, you know, are a lot of, um, of biblical reasons for the roots to be reaching always for water. And that's where uh, a plant only needs water and sun, sunlight, and then photosynthesis and growth starts. So. It's very much like our lives. We need to be, though, of course, we consider, we Christians consider the word as the water that flows through our lives. 
the living waters are the Bible, and that's what our roots go in and get all the nourishment, uh, spiritual nourishment that we need. I guess you could extrapolate this whole picture in that way, but uh, it's just so amazing. And I was thinking about God creating the earth and then saying, okay, I'll put this here and that there. I mean, you know, here it is. I mean, it's amazing. Can, and we can see it. Okay, now we're going to start on our tree. And what I'm going to do is, we, I don't want to cover the whole tree. I want to have clusters of leaves because the, part of these leaves have fallen. And we're going to have some fall leaves down here when we keep going. So I don't want this just solid. Again, I'm going back to these sponges. And this time, first in the background, I'm going to put a dark color because you want to create the shadows that are inside the tree leaves and give it dimension. And then as we come forward, the leaves will get lighter as they move towards us. And then they'll also get lighter on the right side. So first I'm going to take dark, dark color. I'm going to use some red and some orange to get some really dark. And I'm doing this red. It's a little bit of a, a, a lizarin and some orange. And I'm just going to put a few. And I want to, I, now you want to cluster them together. You don't want to have polka dots. But think about where the branches are. And that's where you want to kind of cluster your leaves. And again, the sponge is a great way to, to paint tree leaves. And then, because it's, it's, easy to, it's easy to use, and especially if, if you are a beginner, if, you, if you're not sure what you're doing and you haven't painted before, these sponges are a great, great way to take up your first painting. I think I'm going to try this in watercolor, too, because it's hard to paint every leaf. You have to have something that makes it appear to have a group of leaves. But you want light in between, too, and that, that process makes it perfect. Okay, so we have that. And now I, we're going to have some of these leaves falling. So while I have this dark on here, I'm going to put a little bit of the dark on here. And we're going to work some of this, uh, just a tad across our, our uh, lake here. Because when the leaves fall, they are going to be hitting the, the water as well. So just put a few dark ones. Not too many, just a little bit to get the ones floating in the water. And now the next color we'll use is we're going to get a little bit lighter going here. So I'm going to use this more orangey color right here. And you see it gets kind of messy, so you don't have to have it all separated out and perfect. It's like, don't get your orange in my red paint. <laughs> so now I have more of this orange on it, and I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow here as well, both colors together. And I'm going to very lightly now, I'm going to add another dimension to this. And you see how it's going to change? And they're going to start looking like, and you'll see how the dark in the back makes it a little bit like a shadow back there. So again, I'm using the yellow. I'm not, pe I'm not pushing hard at all. I'm just trying to use the tips of this brush or this sponge. I don't want you to push so hard that you get a blob. Now Very we'll go nice. and put a few down here again because we're doing some of these lighter ones down here. And I'm going to have a few float across the water because they're falling. And then we'll bring a few down off of here like they're, maybe they're dripping into the, into the lake there. And then they're falling down here at the base of this tree. Okay. And I'm just, I'm not going to have leaves over here. I just want to get the color to balance with here. I'm going to balance over here. So I'm going to add a little bit of this color here and just create a, a bush, a few bushes in here just to pull up this orange. Okay, so 
Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, finish off the front down here. And I think that instead of putting more bushes, I'm going to move that up so you can see the front down here, I'm going to take another sponge, which is the same kind. But this time, I'm just going to use the ochre right here. And I'm putting a little bit of ochre on the edge of it. I'm not putting it all the way over. I'm just going to put it on the edge. And then I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. Just like that. So I don't have too much. And it's right on the little edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some grass. And a simple way to use a sponge to make some grass. I'm just going to pull it up like this. Whoops. <laughs> Good thing this mat's down here, Janet. So I'm pulling up like this. Do you see? I'm getting this grass with just using this sponge on the front edge down here. So I just don't have all the same thing going. It gives a little bit more of a, a dimension there, a little more interest. Okay. Now, to keep our water from just being completely solid, I'm going to put a few highlights in the water. And I'm going to take a clean brush this time. And I'll get it wet. And I'm going to go back to the sky colors we used. So I'm going to pick up some white on my brush, just like this, a little bit of the dark blue, just a tad of this really dark blue and mostly white. And let's see what I have here, a little bit of a mixture. So I and remember when the river flows, it doesn't flow uphill, it doesn't flow crooked, it flows level. So when you're coming from the back, it's coming this way, and then it's going this way. It's not going like that. Even though it goes like that, you don't want to paint like that. So you set, I'm going to set along the shoreline, and I want to get a little bit of movement. So I'm going to start using, I have the paint on the top of my brush. And I'm not painting like this. I'm using my brush like this. And I'm just using it kind of as a sponge. And as I sponge it on here with my brush this time, do you see how the, Makes the paint is coming yeah. off? And it's creating a little bit of Movement. Lighter color on the top, which gives you the illusion of a little bit of froth. And then underneath, it's giving you the, 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 the depth. And coming across here like this. And we're just going to get some movement in the water. So this isn't so solid. I'll get my brush a little bit wetter. And then let's smooth this out a little. So I don't want to add a lot, because it's not a big choppy river going on here. But I do want to get something in here that, so it's just not a flat painted um, lake. Just a little bit in here, a little bit here, so we can see where this is coming. And then I'm going to do a little bit lighter in through here, just because this is where our sun is coming down through here, and I want, it, I want it also to hit my water. So I'm going to lighten this up right in through here where the sun's going to come through here. Now, can you s tell that the sun is coming this way through my yes, picture? it looks wonderful. OK, now the last thing I think we'll do is we'll add some uh, more twigs to our tree. And that, so what you want to do when you paint your tree first is just get your branches in, and, which is what we did. And then you can go back and put in all the little branches after you figure out where you put your leaves. Because if you spend all the time painting all the branches in your tree, you're going to cover them all up when you sponge onto it or paint on them anyway. So when we go back, there's a really thin brush. It's like this. It's called a liner brush. It's very thin. And it's almost like a, a pencil. Oops, I just dropped it. Oh, there it is. So they're very thin. You get them wet. And I'm going to use the medium brown, a little bit of the ochre, and 
I'm just going to take this now, and you can put as many in as you want. I'm not going to put a ton because it takes quite a bit of while. So I'm just, you can just go back to your tree again, go up, and put these little twigs in like this. And you can make all the little, all the little branches through here. And then your tree starts to look more normal, more like a, a, a tree. You get these little branches on here, get them in through here. A lot of painting is observing and looking at trees and seeing how they grow. And uh, I think all of us just kind of look at it with our eyes wide open and see the whole thing instead of all those little details. But that's what makes it whole, isn't that true? And you can add as many little twigs as you want. And if you take the time, you just take your time and and draw them on. And the more squiggly, I like to call them gnarly, but the more gnarly they are, the more natural they look when you get them in here. And then you can just put lots and lots of them in and then it, people are really impressed. They go, oh, look at the detail. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you didn't know that that just got whipped in there after I got done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's how you put your little gnarly branches in there. And then if you want to throw in a few little birds, we'll use a little piece of black here. Again, oh, you love, can use... I love the birds. Good. And then to take them, put a little bird in. The further away they are, they're very tiny. So you just put your hand up here. Draw it down a little bit. Draw it over. It's almost like a little V, except his body's a little bit fat where his body is. And as they get to the, to the front, they, they get bigger. So just swoop this guy over, give him a little bit of a body. There you go. And that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay, um, I'm walking over my cloth here. Um, so Janet's going to talk, uh, she wants to maybe put on a few of these classes so you guys can learn if you want to. So be sure and tell Janet if you have an interest in this and we can do some of these classes. And they do take about two hours, not 45 minutes like this. So, you know, you get to slow down a little bit and learn some techniques. But if you're interested in classes, I hope you've considered doing it because it, it's such a nice thing. And, you know, I, I was in art all my life, but I never painted for like 40 years because I was raising kids and doing all of that. And then when I turned 65, I decided to take it back up again. And so um, it's, it's just very rewarding. And I go to these classes that I hold and I have women that are 93, 97. I taught my aunt to paint a picture not too long ago. She's 98. And she loved it and she passed them off to her, to her kids. And it's like to see people do something that they never thought they could do. P people have never picked up a paintbrush in their life and they go, I can't believe I did that. And you know what? It doesn't matter if anybody else likes it. It's just whether you like it. You're the one who gets the joy out of painting it. You get the joy out of looking at it. And it doesn't matter a rip what anybody else thinks about your painting. So I hope you really consider doing it. Thank you. Well, that was incredible. Sign me up for a class. Because I'm a stick man person. <laughs> Thank you so much, Darlene, for sharing your gift with us. We now have a last opportunity to buy raffle tickets and a short break. So there will be a couple gals in the back selling tickets. We have moved the, um, the raffle gifts to the back here. And if you haven't put your tickets in the jars, you can do that now. You can visit the little girls' room if you like. So we're looking at about five minutes break, and then we'll come back and continue on. And the, um, as far as our, today our raffle proceeds 
are going to go to two teenagers who lost their home in Colfax in the fires. Um, their names are Gavin and Maddie. Um, Maddie is 17, Gavin is 15, um, and they and their mom lost everything in the fire. Winter is coming. Of course, they have no clothing. So um, we are going to use our RAF proceeds um, to give gift cards to them so they can buy winter clothes, boots, whatever they need for the coming winter. Thank you, and five minutes, we will see you back in your seats. So now as we wrap up our program, do I kind of feel like a loser. I didn't win anything. I can't draw, but I'm going to learn, right? Um, our, winner with the Lord. Thank you, Matt. Our last, um, our closing now will be um, Michelle coming back up and leading us in, or she'll probably sing this, What a Wonderful World. Ladies, keep your eyes on the screen. Don't take them off. You'll want to watch Michelle, but have your eyes on the screen. We did the best we could, and you're not going to believe this. It took hours of going through whatever pictures we could find off our phones or maybe in old books. So... It is a wonderful world knowing the Lord. It is a wonderful world worshiping with you. Thank you for trusting us and coming today. This was a little bit different out of the ballpark. And with everything going on in the world, I know. So I appreciate you being here today. And I will tell you our next event will be December 4th. And it's going to be a little different too. But we're trying to be as smart as we can be. So stay with us. And next year will be hopefully a different, different year for us. But right now, eyes on the screen, okay? God bless all of you.
No, that was my dog with Lynn. And that was my granddaughter at the end. So see, there are benefits to being on committees. <laughs> Sandy Milbauer, we have asked her to please close us in prayer. Let us join together in prayer and thank God for such a wonderful afternoon. Holy Father, thank you for bringing us all together today. We appreciate the beautiful artistic gift that was demonstrated for us. Please help each of us to use our gifts and talents to glorify you, O Lord. We ask that you bless all the ladies who planned and worked together to present this wonderful gathering and each of the ladies who participated. As we leave today, please keep us and our loved ones safe and well. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen.